We've seen Lara Croft in many guises over the years, but we've never seen her like this. Crystal Dynamics' new Tomb Raider presents a young Lara on her very first expedition, shipwrecked and stranded on an island bristling with danger, pushed to the limits of her ingenuity and will to survive. Over the course of the game, we see this intelligent, resourceful young woman become something closer to the Lara Croft we know, fearless in the face of peril. It is a greatly successful origin story, a series reboot that feels both authentic and hugely exciting. Tomb Raider is a little self-indulgent in the beginning. The first hour is a sequence of carefully scripted set pieces and, yes, the odd button-mashing QTE. But it's all for the sake of character development, and Tomb Raider is so good at this that you'll forgive the strict direction, especially after the game opens up past the 60-minute mark. Croft has been to some really impressive places in her day, and happily this island is among them. It is stunningly beautiful and the game gives you plenty of opportunities to admire it from cliff sides, misty mountain outlooks and precarious climbing ropes. Camilla Luddington's performance as Croft is convincing, and throughout this adventure you'll really feel for Lara. She's just not having a good time out there. It is a compelling reading of the character. We see Croft's vulnerability, but she's never disempowered, and never less than totally capable in extreme danger. The supporting cast is less developed, though. How can you suggest I'm not serious about this expedition, Lara? But... Lara herself is so well realized that her friends and enemies feel two-dimensional by comparison. Thankfully, this does not rob the plot of impact. There are a few jaw-dropping moments in this story, and some sadness too, as well as some excellent fan service. It's a good while before you first pull out a gun in Tomb Raider. Lara's first kill is the game's first dramatic crescendo, a moment of genuine emotional impact. After that moment, though, the game quickly moves on thematically. The transition from terrified survivor forced to take a life to headshot happy killer is jarringly instant, and this is the origin story's only significant weakness. One minute she's retching over a corpse, the next she's skewering five guys through the neck with arrows. Lara has to get used to killing quickly, and so does the player. Combat has never been the strength of Crystal Dynamics Tomb Raider games, but the developer has finally nailed it here. Whether with a bow, shotgun or a pistol, fighting is fun, and crucially, there's not too much of it. Climbing, meanwhile, is masterful. Lara moves naturally and confidently in her environment, but it still feels excitingly dangerous. Leaping across cliff sides with a climbing axe never quite loses that heart-in-throat feeling. Tomb Raider is high octane, and it squeezes your adrenaline gland dry, but it's also got great variety and pacing. There are quiet, tense moments in between the combat-heavy set pieces, and you're never in the same place doing the same thing twice. Even when Tomb Raider falls back on action game cliché, such as this burning building escape, it does so with such confidence and aplomb that you don't mind. In fact, this sequence is one of the game's most breathlessly exciting moments. The Tomb Raider heritage shows itself in the game's secret tombs, which are hidden around the island for you to discover. These are self-contained one-off puzzles that lead the way to treasure. They are frequently ingenious, challenging enough to make you feel very clever when you find the solution. This traditional Tomb Raider exploration takes a backseat to the storyline in the main campaign, so it's great to see it shine in the secret tombs. Lara's love for archaeology and geeky fascination with ancient civilization shows through when she's poring over relics and ancient structures, despite the hardship she has to endure. The island itself is rich with detail and tightly designed. As Lara masters the skills of survival and picks up new tools along the way, you can venture further into its hidden crevices. It makes you feel like an explorer. After the story is complete, you can go back and comb the whole island for collectible trinkets. Miraculously, you will actually want to do this. Without the plot urgently pushing you through them, Tomb Raider's locales become playgrounds, and you can admire their intelligent design as you ponder how to get to a relic on some treetop platform. It goes far beyond what the usual action game offers. There is one truly disappointing aspect of Tomb Raider, and that's the multiplayer, which is best forgotten about. It just isn't a lot of fun, and it's totally superfluous. Two of the four game modes feel significantly stacked in favor of one team over the other, and though Tomb Raider's combat is good in the context of the single player, it's just not flexible or varied enough to support a multiplayer mode. At best, it's passably entertaining, but I'll be surprised if anybody's still playing it in a couple of months. 
Tomb Raider is well-written, sympathetic, exciting, beautiful, and just incredibly well-made. The single player rarely makes a misstep, and though Lara's quick transformation into a hardened killer seems at odds with the narrative at first, the game quickly moves past it. It is a superb action game that brings a new emotional dimension to one of gaming's most enduring icons, and repositions her alongside Nathan Drake at the top of gaming's action hero hierarchy. For more on Miss Croft and her adventures, head over to IGN.